Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the Team Movistar preview. We'll have the men and women's team previews all in one file on podcast players, separate videos on YouTube, as well as an interview with Sebastian Nzue, who is the COO of Abaka Sports, which is the company that owns the Movistar teams, men and women's, as well as being the manager of the Movistar women's team. So that's a, actually a pretty good interview, I've got to say, uh, one of our better ones. And uh, I hope you enjoy that somewhere in the middle of this podcast after the men's preview. But without much further ado, we'll get into our show partner for this show, Lacole. We produce performance cycling apparel. They've made a bit of a stir recently with the release of the Bora Hans Grower kit a few days ago, which I gotta say, seeing some of the other kits that have been released in dribs and drabs throughout the <laughs> previous week, not naming any names, but yes, that one. Um, this Bora kit looks so good in comparison. And um I, I commend LeCole for going a bit different with it and uh taking a few risks. And I think the response has been first of all, most importantly, uh interest in it and largely positive. Although, you know, kits are very, very sensitive and divisive topic there was also the announcement that lacole uh becoming the title sponsor of lacole wahoo women's uci team no they were drops lacole in 2021 they also released their kit which looks one of the best in the women's pro peloton as well i believe they'll be going to the tour de france fam next year so big shout out to lacole back in the world tour with bora hands grower and for supporting women's cycling are continuing to do so with Lacole Wahoo. But now, Benji, you know how we do it. 2021 review first for Movistar. Three World Tour wins, which is more than last year. One Grand Tour stage win, Miguel Angel Lopez in the Vuelta, stage 18, Carmoneteru. A smattering of dot pro wins uh, with Mars Bala, Lopez, Andalucia, and Serrano. And Abner Gonzalez won the Puerto Rican national champs. And then Bala came back and actually won an uphill finish at Cecilia about five weeks after his collarbone. But more points this year. They they were terrible last year in 2020. Just yeah. awful. But more points this year. Still, I think, not great. It's not amazing, but relative to last year where they had two victories, one of which being a World Tour one, this is significantly better. And in all honesty, it's not all about the victories for a team like this, because you, you've got GC riders in this. So we have to look at top 10 positions in Grand Tours, top 5 positions in Grand Tours, sure. and podiums as well. But let's start off with those World Tour wins, for example. That stage win by, by uh, Lopez is certainly one to look at. It's one of the uh, bigger stages of the year when it comes to the climbing on Gamuniteru. And then when it comes to the other ones, yes, there's one in there for the uh, Tour Romandie with Marc Soler. But... On the other one, Volvare in Criterium de Dauphine was also teamwork that brought Movistar to that uh, victory, partially because Lopez decided to start working for Volvare and make sure that people couldn't ride right away at that point. But all in all, that's it's three victories. I would have loved to see a bit more in Grand Tours than one stage win, personally. So that's an area where I'd want to see more from a team like this. When it comes to GC, we are looking at being second at the Vuelta and sixth at the Tour de France with Enric Maas. I think I would have liked to see a top five at the Tour de France with Enric Mas, and six is just out of the bounds where I'm like, ah, oh, come on, just so close. Particularly with Haig crashing out, Robles crashing out, Kelderman had crashed in front of him. He was, yeah, he was just consistently, he got better throughout the Grand Tour, but Mas, I think, did as well as they could have hoped with second in the Vuelta, like no one expecting him to actually beat Roglic. Maybe a stage would have been nice, but he showed a really, really good level in the Vuelta. Mm -hmm. Second there easily, in fact. But still with Mas Benji, he is literally uncompetitive in world, in one-week World Tour races, like Catalonia 19th, Basque 18th, and Dauphiné 11th. And the one one-week race where he was doing well was that one in the start of the, I think, Valenciana, yeah. where he then punctured in the last time trial and then lost the uh, GC as a consequence. So, uh, yeah, it's not an ideal eater for this man. But in all honesty, I think there's also aspects to the te this team where you're like, oh, they had some bad luck. Like a Gregor Mulberger who started joining uh, last season, came to this team and 
was supposed to be a rider for the Hill Classics, for example, had meningitis, if I looked it up correctly a bit earlier, and was off their bike for quite a while, had some injuries next to that. And all that combined made him basically useless for this team the entire season, which is sad because I would have loved to see Mulberger rise up because he was pretty prominent the years before. And that's one thing they're missing here. And then you look at the team and you're like, okay, they've got so many riders for GC and supportive riders for a Mars and a Lopez, for example. But you can't send Mars and Lopez also to LBL and so forth. That's where Valverde came in. Yes, fourth at LBL then. Just, yeah, we spoke about the sprint quite a bit in that LBL uh, should have podiumed. recap. Yeah, he should have podiumed. He is still easily their best rider. Like, Easily their best. He's at 41 years old this year. Oh, in 2021, Bala was. It, it's actually scary how reliant they are on Valverde for results in the Ardennes, where he was, by the way, fifth Amstel, third Flesh, fourth Liège. Yeah. And then at Lombardia, he came fifth. Um, like, it, it's just crazy how reliant they are on him. And, and he says, if we're to believe him, this is his last year. So I'm Serrano. Thankfully, is coming on a bit, which we'll get to in a second. But yeah, they they rely on Balor a lot. Obviously, Benji, you, you said you you want to see more Grand Tour results, and I don't think you just mean GC. Is the problem the quadruple stacking, sending Soler, Mas, Lopez, Balor, sending them to the Tour, and then sending them again to the Vuelta? Do you think they should have? distribute them a little bit more around the place i think it's more the other issue i think it's the fact that like an ineos going towards the tour de france with x amount of leaders for example and if they then eventually end up with a third or a fifth or a sixth spot in gc and you don't have a stage win but you had like three leaders in that team then okay you focus three leaders on getting a sixth position in gc that's just a bit meh you know but other teams have riders that next to that can also go for stage wins. But look at Movistar last season. Who is going to be their guy for stage wins in the Tour de France in like a sprint they can't compete? So they have to look at breakaway opportunities. But breakaway opportunities mostly happen on climbing stages, which means that the domestiques of a Maz and so forth have to go into breakaways for that to happen. And all that stuff combined makes it that they don't have many options to get stage wins in Grand Tours because they focus on GC. And yes, getting second in the Velta is certainly a good result. So that went well. But they also just had one stage win there, which was with one of their GC leaders. I know. And you look at like Marc Soler, really good breakaway rider and often got changed and now he, he's gone. There's also issues Benji with, you know, maybe they're wanting to move in a different direction. Like it seems like Pachi Villa's kind of staged a bit of a coup and Jose Luis Arrieta's out. The for, the, he was the director of Movistar, if you remember them from, from the documentary, the different personalities. Well, Arrieta's out. So I, I wonder what's been going on behind the scenes. Obviously, maybe they're like, listen, 2020 wasn't good enough and Pachi Villa is the man to bring us into a better direction. That being said, yeah, just not. I don't know. Again, I don't know what their budget is either. That like they still have really good um, like sponsor stability, maybe the best in the entire sport. So whatever you think of Eusebio, like he's got the sponsors locked down. So that's priority number one. Last thing on this season review, Benji, the Lopez situation. I'm not sure they could have salvaged it. Like I don't think he wanted to come back um, to Movistar. That being said. If you were them and you had a time machine, how would you have treated the year differently with Lopez or is it just a Lopez problem? Uh, it's. I think it's not necessarily a Lopez problem, but it's a problem when you have multiple leaders and when they don't share in each other's work as much as they perhaps should. But look at the Vuelta. Mars is almost every stage above Lopez in GC. It's logical that the first one to fold into a domestique role when necessary is going to be Lopez in that situation. And Lopez should also realize that. And for example, in the Dauphiné, Lopez did come in and became the domestique for Volvari on that one stage. And eventually, well, Lopez ended up, I think, third on one of those stages and sixth in GC, which was the first of the team than in GC. Perhaps he, after the race, says, well, perhaps if I didn't have to work for Valverde on that stage, I could have attacked and I could have gotten something more of, out of something like that. So I think Lopez might just not be happy with 
the way that he was the guy that offered up and really didn't get much back because of it. Yeah, so he's out. So now we're talking about transfers. Biggest one who came in for the year. Not on huge money, I understand, in 2021. But now out the door, Lopez going to Astana. I think it's a big he's, – he's the best one-hour climber in the world, particularly to altitude in my view. So yeah, he won their only Grand Tour stage. He's an unbelievable climber and he's out. Um, so that is a loss that they have not replaced. Cataldo, you know, aging – Domestique, Italian, gone to Trek, no big deal. Soler to UAE, which I understand was a, a big, big deal, a big offer, which probably, I don't know, It's it seems like a good break for both parties, Benji. I, I feel like it's better for Soler, who won a Romandy stage this year, to just be given maybe some more opportunities in one-week races as, as leader and just to have a different environment. And for the money I, I saw, I, I didn't think it was worth it for them to match it either. Yeah, I think so as well. About Lopez, though, the question there is, we're, we're talking about, is he replaceable? And I think that the results that he got, if you look just at the, at the results on paper, are replaceable. You can get a stage win with someone in a Grand Tour that you get for not limited money and is not a GC rider like Lopez, for example. But I think the main difference there is that he was very supportive in La Vuelta for Mas as well. And that's the one where you got to look at and try and replace and i don't think lopez results wise lived up to his potential so as a consequence it might sound easier to replace than you can't replace the potential but you can replace the results does that make sense yeah 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 it's like we in moneyball when they're like we we can't replace uh johnny damon we just need to replace what are you his, saying? He's on base <laughs> percentage, and, um, and then we'll be fine. So I, I get exactly what you're okay. saying, um, and I, I agree. That being said, Lopez, uh, given what he was being paid, I think, and he, he did an extension and it ripped it up. Anyway, we don't need to rehash that. Other people going out, uh, Davide Velella, Italian to Cofidis. He actually was quite good setting up Baller in that Giro de Sicilia uphill finish. He's a good sort of hilly, hilly classics domestique. Uh, I would have liked to have kept him, but maybe got a better offer. Carotero to Iquipo, Karen Farmer dropping down to Pro Conti, no big loss. Same with Cola, the Brit on San Piran, who actually did an interview recently, and he was like, I think he was talking about Piepoli, who was one of the coaches, uh, Leonardo Pep Piepoli, and he was saying like he was prescribing like five hours rise with no carbs. It's just rubbish, and um, he was supposed to be classic support for Ivan Garcia Cortina, but anyway, he's out. Uh, gone to Conti level back in the UK. But yeah, a bit weird hearing what some of the training stories um, from Piepoli. Also, Alba and Mora to Androni and Manuela. I don't know who those two guys are, so I assume it's no big <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Um, anything okay. else on their, on their outgoings, Benji? I think they're replaceable, except for like, obviously the uh, potential of Lopez. You won't see that in any of the signings, in my opinion. And also... The likes of a Soler can always warrant one World Tour win in a, in a year, but like you said, they weren't going to uh, match the offer that was rumored for UAE. So as a consequence, uh, I uh, I feel like it's uh, better for both parties, personally. Now, um, when it comes to the incoming transfers, a lot of Astana transfers, of course, because yeah. Astana had a, a bit of an odd uh, adventure as we Spaniards. spoke about. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Just recalled all of them. And that includes the likes of Jorge Izaguirre, Alex Aramburu, Oscar Rodriguez. Those are the three that they got from Astana. And in all honesty, all three of these riders have good results in their past, but have not been consistent. It's something like that we can see across the board. And Aramburu, the legend himself, let's talk about him first because he deserves that. And uh, he had that stage win in Itzulia. It was a stage when I didn't see coming. I don't think anybody really saw it coming. Uh, we were hoping for it. We were memeing it, but it actually happened. And he's a very versatile rider, you know, because you've got the cobbles, because he got six in Omlope. If you don't remember that, I didn't, but apparently he got six in Omlope. And then getting that on a hill stage in Itzulia as well, we've got 11th, 13th, and 21st spot in LBL, Flesh, and Amstel. So those are good supportive results to help our leaders in Hill Classic. So I feel like that's very good. Then at Dauphiné, he was getting beaten by Colbrelli, but got close twice, second and third. And then we look at the Tour de France, and they kind of used them, I don't know, once he was sprinting, and I think he was also in a breakaway at some point, in the breakaway where I think Godou and some other guy attacked, Conrad. 
And yeah. Conrad ended up winning that stage, I think. But uh, all in all, throughout the season, I think he's versatile. I think he's not the best at any discipline as a consequence. He has a very high difficulty at winning. And you've got that ITT, of course, at the Vuelta, but I think that was mainly down to the uh, demon descending that he has. What do you think that a rider like this can offer to Movistar? I think he can become a sort of B-tier puncher. Like he came eleventh in uh, 13th in flesh, 11th in Amstel. It gives another option with Bala. I think he's – and like Flesh, he wasn't that far behind either. Seventh in Milano San Remo, just he he got raced heavily in big races, as Ben, you already said, in the Tour and Vuelta by, uh, by Astana, which was uh, similar across the board. I think he just adds so many – just another guy, a guy that can actually win a lot of the races they do, like Memorial Marco Pantani or Gran Piemonte or Cerquito de Ghecho or – and the Luthier stages. Yeah. All, and I think they're really happy with Serrano who came in. Aaron Brew is like next level above Serrano. And I just don't know what to focus on with him, Benji, whether it's like he came second in a TT or does he focus on the Ardennes or does he focus on stage breakaway wins or is it punchy uphill finishes like Giro stage one, which he could definitely win Giro stage one. I don't, I don't know. He, he's very, very all-around rider, and you even mentioned the cobble results. So, what do you think will be his focus at Movistar? What do they? Why do they sign him? Well, why do they sign him is a very good question, and that's a question that you should ask them. But how I look at Alexander Budu as a rider is that he's got that uphill sprint that he's good at. That's something he can do well in, but he's usually ending up in races where somebody is just a bit better at that. And as a consequence, he can't win that easily. You've got Cortina and Serrano also on the team doing very similar things in that aspect. Cortina had a pretty bad year, Garcia Cortina, but I guess we can speak about him a bit later. Serrano can also do that, like we mentioned. I think if I was them, I would look at that as an ability for those Spanish races you mentioned. In Grand Tours, I'd be looking at breakaways, except for Grand Tours where he's together with a Maz as leader, for example. Because I would like to see, just for one race, Aramburu tested as like a proper domestique. Because he's very versatile and has those descending skills. Screw you, Benji. Taking Milka Borhamen and Mark Soler, <laughs> you're taking the most talented riders on Movistar and you're making them become domestiques again and get no opportunities in like, races. Like a friend at Ineos. Dude. Aramburu was also part of the Kuwait Suya. Benji's trying to start the hashtag cage Aramburu movement. <laughs> I never thought I'd never see it. Anyway, that is far too much on Aramburu. Uh, he's also joined by Oscar Rodriguez from Astana, another Spaniard. Um, he was good on Uskadi, one of Welter stage back in 2018, 19, second in GC at Burgos when he was about 24 and 25. Uh, yeah, about 24. And then he went to Astana, was not good for the last two years and is getting a lifeline at Movistar for two years to continue his World Tour career. He, But that being said, he was second at Mont 2 behind Lopez this year on the Mont 2 Denevelle Challenge. So there's some talent still there, some potential there. Yeah, obviously didn't work out at Astana. Maybe Movistar think they can get it out of him. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> hold the big the big signings to last, Benji. Although Max Cantor from DSM, who I thought was kind of good and then I looked at it, it just isn't good. Uh, he's 24. From He's been on DSM or somewhere for a, quite a while. Had a year and off, I think. Uh, had was, a year off because of muscular problems and okay. then came back at DSM and now found his way again with, I think, two top threes, I think, in 2020 in the Vuelta. Yes. Yeah. And then this year was just more of the same. So I don't feel like he has progressed between 2020 and 21. And like you said, he's a bit of a, what do we say, pro Conti sprinter or... That's what I was trying. Is he that? Is he a pro? Like, come on, like seventh in that sprint in Catalonia at Mataro behind Camp, Reinhardt, Janzi van Resberg, and, and Impi. Like, that's the one you'd be thinking, come on, you, you, if you're going to be a reduced bunch sprinter, well, or a, it's just. It's a perfect signing for him. He's the main sprinter for Movistar this year. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, well, no, I was looking as well, Benji. I was like, okay, Tour de la Provence stage one. Again, like we got Schelling is sixth in that sprint, right? Yeah. Um, and he came 38th. He had no lead out. So he's was, was that thinking, the uphill sprint? No, 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 no. That's that was stage okay. two. Stage one was the Ballerini beat Demar flat sprint. In oh, the, yeah, in the, you're right. There was a few hills, but he made it over in the hills. Uh, made it over the hills to the finish. 
he had no lead out. I'm thinking, okay, well, he's going to have no lead out in Movistar. So, like, yeah, he wasn't competitive in that sprint either. And maybe he okay. came on a little bit better at the end of the year with some good results, better results in Tour of Britain. But why, why do you think they sign him? Is it points? Like, I don't think Movistar needs points, right? Yeah, only if they had like a year like 2020. They're, they're, they're safe from relegation for now. Next cycle, maybe. Yeah, thanks to GC, of course, because if they get top fives and top threes at a Grand Tour, they're going to yeah. get major points. And as a consequence, yeah. they don't need to hunt for one on one races with a rider like this. So I don't know. I feel like they wanted just that extra rider who could bring in results across the board because they don't have a single rider in that area. And I think that if you go to the Bing Bang Tour, you put this guy in the team and he can sprint. I don't know. I kind of feel like it uh, shows a lack of faith in Garcia Cortina. Anyway. Well, well, I would as well after this season. That's fair, yeah. Will Barter, another odd signing. American from EF. He had a year on EF in 2021. This year, after he'd been on CCC, and he was like, you know, lucky to get the contract after that, although he did have second on that stage in the world to 2020 when Roglic stole the stage from him by like half a second. <laughs> what a this team. year wasn't, wasn't great. Uh, no top 30s, but maybe he was, I assume he was a domestic role. Um, yeah. They must be signing as a dom, right? Yep. I'm guessing as well. Uh, time trial abilities, yes. Perhaps for the uh, Vuelta with the team time trial. I don't True, know if that just thinking, yeah. falls into that. Because uh, people might look into time trialists to better their squad there. But then again, you've got Oliveira. So isn't that a guy as well you've got? You can't fill the team up with five time trialists just for that TTT, of course. Exactly, like they do have Oliveira, Erviti, and and, and Kara. They got some pretty good engines already. The last single last signing, Oyer Oyer Lascano, another Basque rider, twenty two, tall rider. Um, doesn't really have any results. So, I we'll see, think we'll see what he does. I think he's a good signing. I just don't know why it. I think he will turn out to be a good signing. It's not because I have a deep love for Kaja behind the scenes. Certainly not, but. I um yeah I can't tell you why I just feel like he's he's a decent rider. He's the next Erviti and Oliveira, right? He's that sort of profile. Like he won a break in the Volta of Portugal yeah, but when he was like kind 20. of versatile. He he seems to get over hills as well in some races. So I was looking through his palmarès, through through his results, and I was like, okay, this guy can has some decent time trial results, but some very poor ones as well. And then I look at stages like that. Uh, that stage he won. That you just mentioned, um, Velta Portugal, he has a viseur or something. Uh, that was also indeed that breakaway uh, stage win. So similar to what you said. Okay, next. <laughs> Erviti's thirty-eight. He's retired. He, not sorry. He's not. I don't know that. Erviti's thirty-eight. <laughs> this is his contract ends this year in twenty twenty-two with Movistar. Now he's still really good, might extend. But I'm just saying, it looks to me like like we need to bring in some of the uh, similar domestiques. Yeah. The, the big last big signing, Ivan Sosa. From Ineos, um, I didn't see it coming because he's repped by a Quadro who had the big falling out with Movistar after Carapaz went from Movistar to Ineos. Well, he's got a two-year lifeline with Movistar because Ineos didn't seem too interested in uh, continuing. He won Tour de Provence this year, oh, 2021, then just went missing. He had a four-month break after Algarve in May, and then he came back at Giro della Toscana for the five five Italian one-day races, DNF'd all of them. Do you know what? Did he get COVID? What, what, what happened? I don't know what happened to Sosa, to be honest. Yeah, like um, I might need to read through the Spanish press and see what happened, but he – it wasn't – even this year aside, which wasn't great, like – you look at he, he just struggles in world tour races, Benji. Like he's won GC at Burgos yeah. twice. He's won Tour de Provence. He's won on Laguna de Naya in twenty twenty, uh, or Pick on Blank or whichever it was ahead of Avina Pole. But world tour races and Grand Tours, he has not been able to contribute at Ineos. And if you can't contribute in those races, then Ineos are not going to keep you on. Do you see that changing at Movistar? I don't know. I feel like with Burgos, the interest is there for a team like this to have that kind of rider on. He can do well on that. Laguna Zanaya, he's proven it before. So those kind of races, he can do something on. But is that going to change for GC? I I can't say that. that. That's impossible to say. I think his weaknesses are clear that it's any stage with echelons, he's completely dying at the back of the peloton. So that's not great. But you won't have that every Grand Tour. But on the other hand, 
It seems like every time there's some chaotic stage, he's losing time. And he's not there when you need him. And that's something that's quite necessary for a domestique, for a, a leader. I wouldn't trust him in the team of Mas personally. No, like he just, Grand Tours, he, as you said, just what didn't have it. And even like Tour de la Provence wins at the Chalet Renard stage three. A week later, he goes to UAE. And you've got the crosswind stage, missed the split, whatever, it doesn't matter. Lots of guys missed the split, yeah. sit in the punch. Okay, it's probably a hard day. Then you've got a TT. Then stage three, they got, I think, 800 kilojoules per hour. MVDP was, or whoever before, Jabel Hafeet. And then you've got a watts per kilo test that looks very, very similar to the Laguna Stenaya yeah. or Burgos stages, and he's nowhere. Like, is is that inconsistency that Ineos just, you know, they can't have. And I don't know he's 24. He's definitely not a GC, world to a GC guy. Yeah. Just no shot. But Benji, do you think they're buying in on him possibly being like, could win a queen stage in the, if he's nowhere on GC out of the GC group? Like, do you even see that as possible? My issue with, is that, with that is that if you've got a GC rider in your team, are you going to tell your GC guy, well, we're bringing Sosa to try and win a queen stage, so that's one spot gone in the team to support you. You can't do that. So the only ground tour that you can send them to is the one that Maz is not going to. True. Yeah, and that's the Giro, which Bala's going to, and Bala is going to do the parkour kind of suits him. I, yeah, I don't know. And it all depends on the money too. Like, listen, maybe... Maybe it's like 300K. I very, very much doubt it. Um, and in that case, they're buying low and they could get some good results and he wasn't happy at Ineos. And that, I don't know. Maybe Benji as well. Someone mentioned this to me, like Movistar are not just uh, in the in Spain. They're also in Colombia and South America. Mm-hmm. And with Lopez going, they need a Colombian star. That being said, Sosa, when you look at social media and stuff. He's not the like, star. That's what I mean. Like he's not he's not a Gita, let alone no. Lopez or Quintana or Bernal or Carapaz. He's quite yeah, quite low key for a for a Colombian given some of the follower numbers. But yeah. We'll see how that works out. Uh, not a great track record with uh, Lopez and Carapaz and a quadro guys at Movistar recently. But anyway. Picking their teams for 2022, Benji. Brazil. You forgot the Brazilian, oh, no, right? I'm sorry. I, do, I apologize. That wasn't a How bit. dare you? Vinicius Rangel. Yes, yes, yes. He's uh, a rider that had one registered race in 2021, which is the World Championships U23. That is a, a registered race on PCS. I think that there's probably other races he rode locally in the area. Um, it's his first re- UCI registered team, Movistar. And he's a Brazilian. That's one thing I like a lot because the last Brazilian that I think was in World Tour was someone like Murilo Fischer back in the day. So uh, that, oh, nostalgia, the days of Murilo Fischer. But we don't have much Brazilian cyclists in the top level of cycling. And I like seeing that happen because I know we've got some Brazilian fans for, for LRCP that are very hyped about this transfer. And as a consequence, I am as well. But that nine fat U23 World Championships in France is actually a good result. That's the same as uh, the likes of a Tobias Bayer, the guy that we saw do well in Burgos for Alpecin. The same as Paul Penoé, a rider on Ajizera. No, Grupama, U23 team, very talented rider as well. So he's a rider that can punch pretty well. And I hope we can see that in more races than just this one. So he came over from Brazil to Spain to race this year in August. And did really well on the sort of am- well, not amateur, but smaller Spanish circuit. Yeah. He, as it's twenty years old, he won the Vuelta a Cantabria, won the Vuelta a, a Salamanca, both the oh, only cool. stage races he did, and he won like uh, two stages at one of them, and um, won like every jersey at Vuelta a Salamanca. And yeah, so he looks pretty good. I'm really hyped for it. Young, different country, seems to have great hair, great name, Vinicius Rangel. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. All right. The hair does it. Yeah. Picking their teams for 2022. This is the the hardest slash easiest one, Benji, their cobbled team. Um, and I know Bal is supposed to be doing literally every race, but I think Valverde is their best cobbled rider. He's actually really good at them. Um, but you can't overload them. He's doing RVV. He probably will T10 it because he's a freak. But 
what about Gen Weibel have an omelet? Is you got to try the uh, even Garcia Cortina project again? Yeah, I guess that's the thing we need to do in this team because you've got not that much depth in the Cobble squad of this team. So Garcia Cortina, Johan Jakobs, those are riders I would send. The likes of Matthias Norsgaard, Erviti, um, because he was the guy that was also in the Paris Roubaix break a few years ago and was also pretty good at the end. Jorge Izaguirre seems to get top 40s or like roughly 40, 45 nah, spots. I'm putting my foot down. Okay. This it's isn't a star allowed. anymore. A star, you, we, uh, but, Gorka, you don't have to do 90 race days you, anymore. You need <laughs> eight riders, seven riders, seven Yuri, riders in this Yuri race. Yuri Holman. And? We're at five. <laughs> Jeez. Yuri Holman, Norsgaard, Oliveira. Um, Enric Mas. <laughs> to train for the cobble station, the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, that's not... Yeah, there might be some truth to that. Um I don't see it happening. Is Jorge Arcas? No, he doesn't do them. Max Cantor, I don't know. Like he hasn't done much in couple races before, but you gotta fill the team up somehow. Albert Torres? Who who is that? What does he do? No people. Rangel! <laughs> Ninth in Flanders U23. Come on, send them. Jorgensen. Did you say Jorgensen? I did not say Jorgensen. I would send him. He seems versatile. He seems like he could just he's kind of like powerless and could just randomly rip off a T10 and on loop. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a bit light on the ground for most of the classics, especially when, when Bala's not there. It's not definitely not their strength. But for the length of classics, uh, I think Valverde's the man there, which is um, actually not a bad option. Like he he's top 10 Flanders before, which is kind of crazy. Maybe Luis Mas as well usually does in Benji as a domestique. All right. Hill classics. Are you sending Aaron Baru with Bala to yes. to them? I, I agree. Serrano as well, actually. Yeah. The, the Movistar Trident has to be complete. You cannot <laughs> go without a Trident. The one day Trident. Uh, he did them this year. He did he did them this year without too much success. I don't know. I see Serrano as better in the uphill finishes of easier races, like a Andalusia Tour stage. Bologna. Which domestiques, Benji? Jorge is a gear if he can't go to the gobble races for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's one I would put up there. Oh, next to that. What, sorry? Carlos Verona. He usually goes to Liège as a dom. Yeah. Yeah, true. You're right. But once again, we need to fill up a full team. And right now, we don't have that many. Uh, Matthias Nordsgaard, nah. Jorgensen for these, like, I would put Jorgensen in the Hill Classics instead of the Cobble Classics. Yep, he could, he should do them. Um, Pedrero, maybe, or, yeah, Abner Gonzalez, Benji. Like, why not? Your man. Cortina um, Amstel, not LBL. Is that too much? Yeah, it's a fair point. You know, it's a fair point. Like, maybe, I don't know. I would have him peak a little bit earlier. Um, maybe the Vinicius Run Hell guy just sent him <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Like it's it's all on Bala and a little bit on uh, on Aaron Baru for those for the Giro. Apparently Valverde is going, uh, which I think is really a really good idea. Given stage one is like perfectly suits him, and there's no altitude, and I think it perfectly suits him. Frankly, the otherwise I would send. Would you send Max Can to Benji to try in sprints? My team for the for the Jira would indeed include Max Canter for the sprints because you can't put Max Canter in the Tour de France and the Vuelta if you send Maz as GC rider because the team needs to focus on Maz in my eyes in the Grand Tours that Maz is in. So I would put Max Canter in this one. I would put Valverde, obviously, as leader. Uh, Aramburu is the question now because... You can choose in this team between, like we said, Cortina, Serrano, and Aramburu. I would put Aramburu in the Giro and the Vuelta while Garcia Cortina can do the tour with the cobble stage. Yes. Uh, because he needs to help out Miles over those cobbles. But no. in the Giro, then, no? Okay, no. YOLO. <laughs> no support for Miles. <laughs> uh, in the Giro, I would add the likes of uh, Pedrero as support for Valverde, perhaps, something like that. Mulberger. It depends on how where he's at because we haven't mentioned Milberger for the Hill Classics. I would put him in there if he's back because we didn't say it because he was injured this year. But yeah. hopefully he can come back and also do the Hill Classics. But I don't know. It depends, you know, because 
I'd argue that the Vuelta is better for an informed mule banger, but are you going to try it first time in the Vuelta with Maz as leader? It's a good question. So it's difficult to to decide that. Jorgensen, I don't know if I can fit him in the Tour de France and the Vuelta team. So that's why I would put him in the Giro. Bala needs some help. Yeah, I'm going to send Pedrero with him. I'm going to send Sosa, Mulberger, Kant <laughs> can go. Uh, I think we got to give all all the help Bala needs. This is his last and, and Aaron Baru as well. Aaron Baru, I think, medium mountain, very, very good. And there's a lot of Basque stages. No, that's in the Welter, not the Giro. Jesus. Um, maybe Will Barter. I don't know. It's it's difficult. There's not – I just think they yeah, they got to give Bala some decent support. Um on your point, Benji, the reason I said no about Enrique Mas, I said, isn't that the problem with this team? Is that they treat their rider coming T6 in the tour as if they're Pagacha wearing the yellow jersey. And only in the Vuelta did we see Verona, who was getting flogged, <laughs> like domestique work all, yeah. all day, one day, and then, you know, break, break day in, day out, trying to gain time for teams classification or whatever. Don't you think they need to loosen up a bit and ride a bit more like EF? I would dare to say so, but if you can get second in the Vuelta with Mars, then you can also win if at any point Roglic has no, I mean the a puncture or something. But in the Tour de France, yeah, I think they need to play more uh, more free because if you've got sixth at the Tour de France, that's not a position in which you have your entire team changed up, in my opinion, chained up. Um, so I would indeed look at the Tour de France to be more free, but what do you do then? You put Cortina in a free role and you try breakaways with other riders in the meanwhile? Yeah, I think Cortina for those transition stages. I mean, Jesus, they tr- remember Benji, they had three guys in the stage 19 break and then they got the call and they dropped out of the break. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Tour de France team, Enric Maas. Verona. Verona, Erviti, Oliveira, um, maybe Pedrero because Bala's not going to be going. Garcia, Izaguirre? Yes, yes, Izaguirre. And Mulberger or Las... No, no, that's kind of what am I saying. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gonzalo Serrano, maybe. Maybe they need they need a punchy guy and they don't have Aaron Brew there. They don't have Bala there, so maybe Serrano. I'd argue that's... Uh... A good choice but yeah i think when when going over this team so far i feel like they don't have great support from us in turn in the mountains i mean it all yeah. depends on sosa right like he i don't think he will uh but they'll be hoping he can and maybe sosa is really good in the first three months of the year or the yeah. season and it's a no-brainer that he's verona, be- but we've said that he comes but next to verona then i'm looking at izagiri as the one i perhaps trust the most in the team so far i don't know if rodriguez is going to be trustable as a domestique True. at this team that's also an unknown for us rubio what can he offer when it comes to domestique work because he has ridden the giro i think this year but he did that getting 39th in gc who was he riding for damn pedrero pedrero won root doctor to this year um he's kind of been steadily Steadily improving. He won that he was, ahead of uh, Errata. He was essential in the uh, Carapaz Grand Tour victory at the Giro when they were on the, was it Mortirolo when Nibali attacked the entire uh, Landa and Carapaz situation and Pedrero was the one that kept Nibali in check or something or Carretero, one of the two. He's he's actually pretty good. So I would kind of, they, they need Pedrero, Sosa, Oscar Rodriguez, or maybe one else, so one other, Gorka is going to really step up and be a mountain domestique yeah. for us, I would think, uh, if they want to challenge for the tour podium. The Vuelta Benji, it's going to be the the Bala goodbye show, and that's that's all it should be. It's going to be Bala, I don't and know, Mas. Mas for GC, even though Bala's a better GC rider. You heard it here first. I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> Bala just doesn't care, but he's actually a better GC rider. I disagree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about Aaron Baru though? Like, isn't I, that, I said it. Aaron Baru, Giro, Vuelta, double. But it's a cursed combo, Aaron Baru and Balerde. It's like the punchy... Although Verde is the lead out. 
<laughs> True, yeah, we were discussed this. He needs, like, the last Grand Tour needs to be Valverde giving the, <laughs> like, giving the throne to another rider and no, who no, no. better than the legend himself, Alex, the cycling guru at Amburu. It needs to be Bala kick, kicking, <laughs> kicking, and then Aaron Baru like bring, being on his wheel, and then like stealing the win from him, and then yeah, Bala was <laughs> fucking mental. That was, I, I hope it happens. Um, or Aaron Baru even better brings like a group back to him, and the, uh, someone else wins. Um, anyway, yeah, but Aaron Baru can't do that because he's caged for Mars now these days. True. <laughs> That's what, like, you know what's going to happen. Uh, Vuelta's going to be, like, they'll stack the team. It's the most important race for them. And listen, Movistar were really good in the Vuelta this year. Like, I, I think they don't get enough credit for it. Like, they had so many riders crash yep. out. They had a guy on second. They had Lopez in sixth, and then he, he left. But they they won the Queen stage. They came second in the open. No, that Aaron Bruce on a starter. <laughs> like, Val, Bauer crashed out, and they still did really well. So I think... Like encouraging signs and Mars definitely taking a step up. Now time for the over-unders, Benji. There are two World Tour wins last year, I think. Three this year. Three. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, sorry. No, I got my years confused. I meant 2020. They uh, didn't. They only got two wins. in. I'm trying to think of an, how many did they get in a normal year. in, in uh, So when they had Quintana and Bala and Carapaz, they had in 2019 – seven world tour wins including a grand tour win and in each grand tour and the giro gc i've seen the over under at three no nah, it's too low is, is it, it? Two, yeah three and a half i think it's gonna be just over but it won't be that big of a difference if you had it at four and a half i would have doubted the problem is there's not that many Spanish one-week World Tour races. There's No, there are. Yeah, well, but... There's Baskin, there's Scudley. Yeah, you're right. Jesus. Oh. It's going to be hard for them to get stages. Because, like, people... Well, will do it, man. Come on. Final year. <laughs> he's he's not fast anymore. He's a better GC rider. He's... Not than Mars. <laughs> Peacock and, and Aaron Baru. Yeah. And, and, and well, current, like I wouldn't put that on Budo on the level of Pitcock, to be honest. <laughs> in a flat sprint, in a flat sprint, he's quicker Pitcock's than Bala. better. Then Aaron Baru? I don't know about that. Um, yeah. well, maybe we'll see at the Giro, as we have discussed. Um, but a counter. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, three and a half is difficult. I'm, I'm taking. Because the thing is, Benji, say Mars comes third in tour and win and second of Welter, great results, still not a win. Uh, I'm going the yeah. under. Oh, I think they'll get four, so above. Okay, I just kind of want to be a contrarian. Uh, do you think Balverde actually retires? Yes, it's a shame. Um, but he comes right. back in two years <laughs> and wins the Tour de France in seven. <laughs> That would be kind of funny. All right, the last section now, the hot takes for Movistar 2022. Do you have any any lined up? Oh, God, I didn't, but I will have them lined up in the sense that I will say that. I got one. Adam Buda will win a Grand Tour snatch. I have to, like, I have to. Yeah, that's that's true. I have to win a Grand Tour where he's not chained for uh, Moz, of course. Um... And next to that, my hot take is that Abner Gonzalez is going to win a race, same as last year, but now it's going to happen. He's actually kind of, like, he's not bad. <laughs> he's growing. <laughs> yeah. I think Valverde wins the Giro, podiums the yeah. Vuelta. Um, and yeah, I think I think Bala will also podium two monuments. So he's going to win the Giro, podium two monuments, and come third in the Vuelta. So that, that's pretty good for a 42-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that your entire hot take? Like all those results together? I mean, come on. That's like flaming hot. What about – I don't think uh, – I think – I don't think Mass wins the race. Um, well, that's not a hot take. <laughs> true. true. He'll get second everywhere. The one race that he was winning, Valenciana, he ended up puncturing in the last time troll just to not make it happen. I don't think Mars uh, top fives a stage race on GC. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That's flaming hot. 
He's going to be domestic for Bauer. And what do we say about our Brazilian? I think he, he wins a race. I think he wins yeah. a race. Okay. Like Sir Quito gets you or something like that. Okay. Yes. You're, do you, you think agree? this is the rise of uh, the new Brazilian wave into cycling? I don't know. I'm not too well versed on Brazilian prospects, but you know, three year deal at 20. I reckon, I reckon he's winning a race and Mark Benji down for that too. But yeah, that was our Movistar men's preview. We have. Enric Mas apparently out of contract at the end of 2022. I assume, well, uh, he, he should be extending at Movistar. They should if be he leaves, him. what is this theme? <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to talk about at the end here, Benji. Is you know he he will be re-signed. They need him. He needs he gets un he gets tour and world to leadership every year. Like yeah. locked in, perfect for him. Spanish right? They should pay him a lot. And he's you know he's good. He's still improving. He's he has he's running out of things to win. But Bala Benji. What the fuck are they going to do when he retires in the Arden? How about all the money that is gone from Fulverde? They spend into getting Carapaz back, making uh, super I, drama I of know. the fact that Carapaz left. Oh, they actually should though. They actually should resign Carapaz. Yeah, they should resign Carapaz, and it fits because his contract is running out. <laughs> like it's the perfect addition. For them, it's like um, Bennett returning to Bora. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. So it, listen, we just saw it happen. Like, and that was even more acrimonious. Like it seemed than than Car- Carapaz and it was more seemed to be between a Quadro and Movistar. They were like, "Fuck you, a Quadro." But yeah, Car- they need Carapaz, and I think Carapaz kind of needs them. <laughs> like, yeah, as well. So you're right. They just he gets to go to the Giro every year and, and be leader, but. Yeah, I don't know. They 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 need a Bala transition strategy. They got Aaron Baru. I think it's a good signing. He's certainly no Bala. And um, the problem is, Benji, the biggest Spanish prospects are not on Movistar. Ayuso at UAE and Carlos Rodriguez at Ineos. And that's the problem. Is and Enric Mas as well, Benji. Enric Mas was on Quickstep. And then came over to Movistar after he came second on Quick Step in 2018. So they're not actually getting and developing the best Spanish talent, yeah. uh, both then and now. So that's a problem as well. And yeah, there's no replacement for Bala, but it's it's impossible man to replace. Just something to watch. Anything else to add? Nope. Okay, that was our Movistar men's preview. Thanks as always for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.